All right. So for another source of interrupts, we have what we call yung ating external interrupts. So basically, an external pin to the microcontroller, tinitignan natin yung input kung nagbabago ba siya. And if nagbago siya, mag-generate tayo ng interrupts. So coverage ito is yun nga, yung external interrupt source and some examples using yung external interrupt. So ito yung parang generic or I guess one of the, a simplified version ng ating external interrupt. So generate an interrupt whenever yung input natin to a pin changes. So pag tinignan natin yung sa circuit, so ito siya, CRA0, si pagka nag-change siya, ayan, mag-generate siya ng interrupt. 0 to 1, ayan, change siya. So basically, XOR lang ng current at saka ng previous kung pareho. And if hindi pareho, we generate an interrupt. So medyo simple lang, no? So very easy to understand. So, san, so wala naman actually ako masabi pa more <laughs> about external interrupts. So, Let's just have an example of how we can use the interrupts with uh, or ano ba yung common use no ating external interrupts. So usually used in conjunction with digital inputs. Instead of waiting or polling, we wait for an interrupt or we ayun, magabang ng interrupt. Hindi naman talaga nag wait yung program. And we can also use yung external interrupts to uh, help with pre-processing pag complicated yung input interface natin. So one of the most common use cases is yung input debouncing na tinatawag. So if uh, if aware kayo, hopefully you're aware, yung switches natin mechanical yan. Meron yung mga springs sa loob and kahit naman walang spring, basta meron tayong dalawang objects na lalo na pag metal, pag nagtatouch sila, hindi naman sila parang didikit na parang magnet. So para mag magba-bounce siya ng konti hanggang mag seal. So, yung pagba-bounce na yon is uh nag-generate siya ng weird na signal over here na nag-iba yung input natin. So, what we want is ayun, mag-generate ng external interrupt at this initial na pagpindot ng ating switch. However, yung succeeding na bounces, meron tayo, para nag-expect din tayo ng interrupts doon. So what you want to do is parang uh, wait muna tayo, huwag muna tayong gagawa ng interrupt after a few seconds just to uh, palipasin muna natin yung bouncing basically. So yung bounce period na to is usually nasa data sheets to ng mga push buttons natin. And yes, meron data sheets yung mga push buttons natin. And yeah. so after waiting for a certain amount of time, we should be sure if ano, na tala, ano ba talaga yung ating input, if high ba siya or low, or parang nag, nang gogolo lang siya, or nitawag natin glitch. So yung, I, yung interrupt handler natin, usually yung tinsura niya. So at first, pagka-activate is disable natin yung external interrupts and clear yung external interrupt na flag. Then we want to generate a delay equal to the bounce period. And then after the delay na yun, we check if uh, yung part value natin is expected. So yun, if nasa low tayo initially, dapat nag-expect tayo na high siya. Pag high siya initially, nag-expect tayo na low siya. So if hindi siya yung expected value natin, ignore the event. Ano nangyari? It's probably a glitch. And then, ayun, if yun, it's the expected value, do what getting that input down. So, ano ba dapat ang mangyari pag pinindot yung push button? Gawin mo na siya. And re-enable yung interrupt and return to the main routine. So, of course, uh, ito yung medyo basic na handler. Pwede kang gumamit ng semaphores and put this functionality in the main code. So, yan, medyo simple lang. Ito, medyo hirapan natin. Uh, we can use keypads with our microcontroller and using external interrupts, pwede nating interface yung itong keypad na to. So, ayun. Uh, so, first things first, ano ba yung itsura ng keypad electrically speaking? Ano yung in-expect natin mangyari doon sa inputs and outputs natin? So, essentially, yung keypad is a matrix of switches. So, for this 
specific to keypad, meron tayong 12 different switches. Pero ilan yung inputs natin or ilan yung pins ng keypad? We only have 7. So, 7 lang kasi we have 1 pin for each row and 1 pin for each column. So, ano yung ginagawa ng switch? So, basically, ang ginagawa ng switch, pagka, pagka, ayun, pagka pinres natin si 1, magko-connect to. So, magko-connect yung row connection 7 at saka yung column connection 3. So, magiging short circuit yung 7 to 3. And then, usually, yung gagawin mo, or ang gagawin natin with the microcontroller is meron tayong weak pull-up dito na resistor. So, si pin 7, by default, high yung kanyang input. And then, pagka si pin 1 kinonect natin, magkoconnect siya kay pin 3. And si pin 3, usually, lalagay mo siya sa ground. And dahil nakita mo na nasa ground siya, magiging ground to, mawawalang visa yung pull-up na to, and yung nasa row 7 natin would be uh, 0, or nag-change siya from high to low. So, ayun. So, yung nasundan yan. So, uh, ano dapat yung gawin natin doon sa ating intrapander? So, what you want to do is lahat ng rows natin are outputs and inputs yung ating columns na may external interrupt na enabled. See, <laughs> and then yan. Initially, lahat ng rows natin ay low and nakatanggal yung mga pull-up resistors in this case. And then uh, on our interrupt, we set each row to, yung each output row to high one at a time. And then, may kita natin later on bakit kailangan natin gawin yan. So, yeah. So, for example, yan. So, lahat ng color blue as outputs, lahat ng red ay uh, <clears throat> and lahat ng red natin ay inputs. And by default, high sila dahil dun sa ating pull-up resistors. So, ayun, let's say napindot si 5. Ang mangyayari is si, 5, si pin 6 makakonect siya kay pin 2. And therefore, si pin 2 maging low. So, makakadetect tayo ng external interrupt kay pin 2. So, yun, mag-generate siya ng IRQ. So, yung interrupt handler natin, ang gagawin niya, Yung mga row connections natin, di ba outputs to? Pwede natin silang iset na high one at a time. Pag ginawa kong high si 7, walang mangyayari. Pag ginawa kong high si 6, ang mangyayari ay si pin 2 magiging high din siya. Pag ginawa ko naman high si 5, walang mangyayari. Pag ginawa kong high si 4, walang mangyayari. So, ano nangyayari? Nung sinet natin si 6 to high, nagbago yung uh, input natin kay 2. So, that means na yung pinindot natin connects yung ating pin 6 tsaka pin 2. And that corresponds to the column 2 and row 2 which is uh, switch 5. So, ayun, we can therefore determine na yung pinindot na button is in column 2, row 2 or number 5. So, in summary yun, Disable natin yung interrupt para yung case magkaroon ng uh, other interrupts. And then yun, since uh, ayun, isa-isa natin, port 7, set natin si port as high. And then, nagbago ba yung column value natin? No. So, check naman natin si port 6. Tapos, ayun, is port still an output pin? Yes. So, eh, tuloy lang tayo. Hanggang ito lang, escape lang. So, essentially, pinalitan na natin lahat, walang nagbago. So, that's probably a glitch. So, walang, ignore lang natin. 
And then if yung column value natin na change, you can now determine kung ano yung pinindot ng button doon sa ating keypad and do what needs to be done. And then, yun, re-enable yung ating interrupt. External interrupt. So, yun. In summary, wala naman talaga na masyadong mapag-usapan about external interrupts. Except yun nga, we usually gagamitin mo siya with inputs, asynchronous inputs, or inputs na in-expect natin at any time. Then usually, ang function ng ating external interrupt handler is pre-processing ng inputs. So, ang tinakil natin here is yung debouncing at saka yung sequence ng pag-decode kung anong key yung pinrest sa isang keypad. So, hopefully, these make sense and ayun, may matutunan kayo for this video.